Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Robert Taylor, Susan Peters, and Van Heflin in Johnny Eager. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we welcome back to the Lux Radio Theater two gentlemen who are appearing for the first time since returning from the service. They are Robert Taylor, formerly lieutenant in the Naval Air Corps, and Van Heflin, a lieutenant in the Army Air Forces. Both are co-starred with another favorite of the screen and radio, Susan Peters, who has won the admiration not alone of Hollywood, but of all America. Bob appears tonight in one of his outstanding screen performances, Metro Goldwyn Mayer's drama, Johnny Eager, with Van Heflin in the role that won him an Academy Award. I'm sure you'll agree that having Bob and Van back with us lends a, a pre-war quality to this exciting drama of suspense, action, love, and sacrifice. And speaking of pre-war days, I have a letter from a friend whom I met some years ago while visiting the celebrated ruins of Angkor in French Indochina. Commenting on a recent statement that I made, she writes, When you say Lux soap is known around the world, it reminds me of an incident in a small hotel in Java. When I found no soap in the bathroom, I gestured my disappointment to the room boy. He finally understood, and after a long delay, he came back smiling broadly and bearing in his hand, to my great joy, a cake of Lux soap with its friendly label printed entirely in Javanese. Well, from my own experience in the Orient, I can readily appreciate just what a luxury that cake of Lux soap was to Miss Alice McFadden, who so kindly passed the story on to me. It's time now for Act One of Johnny Eager, starring Robert Taylor as Johnny, Susan Peters as Lisbeth, and Van Heflin as Jeff. On the edge of one of our larger cities, a huge electric sign looms over a newly completed grandstand. Where at nighttime you could distinguish the sign a mile away. Algonquin Park Dog Track, 11 races every night, grand opening soon. A taxi cab has just pulled up to the main entrance. The driver pauses at the gate while a swarthy-faced attendant picks up a telephone and dials a luxurious suite on top of the grandstand. Hello? Hey, Benji. Yeah? There's a hacky here who wants to see Mr. Marco. Has to tell him it's Johnny Eager. Let him too. A cab driver, Benji, to see the boss. You heard me. Okay, if you say so. He's coming now. I tell you, Marco, it kills me. Every time I hear that routine, it still kills me. What kills you? Them guys on the gates. Would I like to see that kisses did they ever find out that Johnny Eager only owns this dog track? Yeah, what good's a dog track when they won't let you open it? Eh, he'll open, don't worry. What a guy. Driving a cab to keep the parole board happy and running half the rackets in town on the side. Yeah. Yeah, all Johnny's got to do is sit in his living room here and watch the suckers in the grandstand make him rich. If the track ever opens. What makes you think it won't, Marco? Oh, <clears throat> hello, Johnny. Hello. Where's Jeff? I ain't seen him, boy. Find him. Uh, wait a minute, Benji. Yeah. You got some more rounds to make, haven't you? Yeah. Get going. Where's Lou Rankin? Inside with the others. Send him in. Okay, Johnny. Uh, Lou's not very happy these days. I wonder why. Are you kidding? The way they're trying to clamp a lid on this town... What right? lid? Roll over, Marco. Want to see me? Yeah, you got anything for me, Lou? What's wrong? You think I'm holding out my collection? Nobody said you were. The way this town shut down? Well, I haven't got a dozen books running. No dice, no roulettes. Well, some fat years, some lean. Got 60 slot machine collectors on my payroll. I can't pay them off with conversation. Who asked you to tell them anything? I'm just trying to... You blaming them. me for the lid being on this town? No. We're getting no place fast. Something's got to crack. <laughs> this is a laugh, you and me barking at each other. Put it on the table, Lou. Do you think I'm giving you the wrong end of the deal? I'm sorry, Johnny. It's just a short dose giving me a grouch. That's all right. No, of course not, Lou. I'm just as jumpy as you are, that's all. I'll run along then. So long, Johnny. And thanks. It's okay. Marco. Yeah? Have a couple of the boys see what Lou does with his time. Hey, you're not worried about Lou. Okay, Johnny, I'll have him watched. 
Say, it almost makes me wonder if you trust me. Silly question, huh, Marco? <laughs> Now, look, I've got over a half a million bucks in this racetrack. We've got to open, you understand? When are you going to get that injunction lifted? Johnny, I've talked to five judges. What more can I do? Every one of them has refused. Why? Our new city prosecutor, Mr. Farrell. Farrell, wouldn't you know I'd have to run into him a second time? He helped the DA send you away once, Johnny. Go easy now. John Benson Farrell, that righteous old rat, comes out of retirement and gets himself elected to a chicken coop job like prosecutor. What about Halligan and those boys from City Hall? They got a barrel of my money. They think I'm going to fold up and not get my dough back? Ever hear of a politician paying anything back? You can talk to Halligan yourself if you want to. exactly what I'm going to do. You beat it now and find out... Okay, Johnny. Oh, hello, Garnet. Uh, hello, Johnny. Come on in. Don't I even get a kiss? Hmm? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Well, you might say you like it. Anytime I don't like it, you'll hear me loud and clear. You seen Jeff around? No, he was here an hour ago, but he wandered away. Say, who was Attila the Hun? It's a fine time to throw another bender. Uh, who was who? Attila the Hun. I don't know why. Well, he said you were the modern-day Attila the Hun, and I was your inamorata. And I'm going to get a load of what that means, too. <laughs> you just keep checking up on Jeff's big words, and we'll both get educated. Yeah? I'm bringing gas home for dinner, so you'd better leave the office as early as you can. Oh, uh, thank you. I'm, uh... Rather busy right now. Maybe you can call me later. Yeah, sure. Goodbye. What now? Miss Mines from the parole board. I got to get over to the west side in a hurry. Is there any dame you haven't got in your pocket, Johnny? This place on the west side, what is it? I told you a dozen times. Oh, I wish I could believe It's you. a two-bit flat. I keep it for my cousin Millie Fowler and her kid. They live there. So do I whenever I think the parole board may be checking up. Sometime I'm going over there with you. Sometime you're going to make me sore. <laughs> oh, relax, baby. I'll see you later. Hello, Johnny. Somebody's coming? Yeah, from the parole board. Better put some tea on, Millie. Sure. You look good, Johnny. I'm okay. Bertie. Huh? Oh, hello, Uncle Johnny. Hi. I bet the investigators are due. You wouldn't be coming near this rat trap. Stop being so fresh. If it wasn't for Uncle Johnny, where'd you think we'd be? He gets what he pays for. Oh, I'm grateful, no. It's good. okay, Millie. Bertie's a good girl. She's got sense, haven't you, kid? Haven't you? Yeah, sure I have. Well, wipe that paint off your mouth and grab your school books. We're going to be doing your homework. Well, hello, Mr. Vern. Good to see you. Hello, Johnny. Glad to find you at home. Uh, everything all right, Mr. Vern? Certainly, Johnny. This is just routine. Oh, uh, Miss Sanford, Miss Bard, this is Mr. Eager. How do you, How do, you do? do? Oh, and this is Mrs. Fowler and Miss Fowler. Hello. Well, isn't this nice? I hope you'll forgive us for coming here with Mr. Vern. Well, it's okay. Uh, won't you sit down? We were just going to have some tea. I'll bring it right in. Oh, please, we don't... No bother at all. You must be wondering what I'm doing here with two such good-looking girls, Johnny. <laughs> I'm beginning to like the parole board better and better. Well, they're <laughs> interested in sociology. I've been helping them with their field work. Sociology? Oh, let's see now. I'm... It's a study of, of social conditions, Mr. Eager. Seeing how the other half lives. Well, I mean, uh, things like crime... Uh, well, uh, what I mean... Yeah, I... sure, sure. Except that I'm no criminal anymore. I wish they were all as straight as you, Johnny. Why, you're a model parolee. Well, yes, it's it's difficult to believe you were ever a, well, an offender, Mr. Mr. Vern can tell you, miss, one time or another, I was indicted 38 times. Good grief. Johnny, don't you ever get hungry for the old days? Those $200 suits, that big bankroll, all the girlfriends you used to have? Uh, here's your two ladies, Thank Mr. Vern. Thank you. Yeah, sure I do, I'd... Be a chump not to admit it, but when I think about that prison cell and how if I stub my toe just once more, I'd go back for the rest of those five years. Think about that, and I don't miss being a big shot at all. And you're satisfied driving a taxi cab? Satisfied? Why, well, miss, I've never been so well off in my life. We were going to drop in on some of the other boys, Johnny, but when Miss Sanford saw your record, she particularly wanted to visit here. She did? Why? My name is Bard. Uh, she's Sanford. As a matter of fact, she didn't want to come at all, did you, Liz? Why not? Well, I, I think it's rather an imposition. I mean, it, it must be terribly embarrassing to have us come in this way. I'm very sorry. Oh, I'm glad you came. Where I've been, you can never get enough company. Thank you. Oh, uh, Bertie, how's your schoolwork coming along? Oh, fine, Mr. Vern. Uncle Johnny's helping me with my homework. Oh? Well, what is your homework? Oh, we got to write an essay on some famous character in fiction. We can't think of a good one. No, it's kind of tough. What about A Tale of Two Cities? When Sidney Carton was in jail and... Oh... No, uh, that wouldn't be very good, would it? Well, the character is excellent. Now, there's another man somewhat like Sidney Carton. 
a Cyrano de Bergerac. Who? Oh. A Cyrano de Bergerac. A very romantic man, Mr. Eager. Yeah, well, how about settling for him, Bertie? He, uh, he went for the girls, huh? Well, not exactly. You see, all his lovemaking was on behalf of Christian, his best friend. Why? What was his angle? Well, Cyrano was very ugly. He was afraid the girls wouldn't like him. Oh. What's wrong? You're not going to read it? Oh, thanks. Ugly or not, Miss Bard, I'm not interested in a guy who doesn't go through with what he starts. Well, come on, girls. We've got to be running along. Goodbye, Mrs. Fowler, and thanks for the tea. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Mr. Eager. Goodbye. Thank you, Mr. Eager. It's been very pleasant. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry about your man, uh, Cyrano. Well, perhaps I never thought of it quite your way. Perhaps you're right. Goodbye. And they call this a free country, busting into your house like that. Uncle Johnny. What? That Miss Bard. I was watching her all the time. So what? She never took her eyes off you. Anytime you want to whistle, she'll come around. Forget it. You were watching her, too, you know. Here, here's five bucks. Go cut yourself a rug someplace. Thanks, Uncle Johnny. Yes, sir. Anytime you want to whistle. Can I take you anywhere, girl? Oh, thanks, Mr. Vernon. My car's parked at your office. Oh, fine. Liz, wasn't that eager individual the handsomest thing you ever saw? Well, I don't think handsome's the word, Judy. His face is well cut, but once for a moment there, it became so hard. I think he'd beat a woman if she made him angry. I wonder... What? Oh, what sort of a woman he goes around with? Hey, chum, there's a limit to this sociology business, you know. Hmm? <laughs> yes, I guess you're right. But I still wonder. Well, that didn't take long, Johnny. Everything okay? Everything's fine. Hey, Benji, remind me to send a little present to Miss Mines at the parole board. The way that damn tips you off, I wish I could get tips like that on the horse. Oh, Julio, come on in. I, uh, I visited that man on Ender Avenue, Eagle. Yeah? I think he has learned not to talk so much. Okay, here. Hey, but he got 50 bucks. That's all that sort of a job's worth. But I owe lots of people money. I if can't... If I give you any more, you'll just put it on the horses. You stop playing sucker and we'll talk a better deal. Okay, Eagle. I'll be around tonight. Yeah, you do that. Mm, that Julio, he, he gives me the creeps. You better watch him, Johnny. Watch Julio? Are you nuts? Has Jeff shown up? Yeah, he's inside. Garnet's with him. Tell him to come on in. No, wait a minute, never mind. I'll go in there. Johnny, here's how you've insulted me. I looked that word up in the dictionary. Empress, I have incurred your displeasure. I shall fall on my sword at the first opportunity. You just wait. Beat it, honey. I want to talk to Jeff. Oh, Johnny. He, he called me an inamorata. I looked it up, and it says... Go on, go on, go on. It isn't smart to blow your top of that way. You. When I'm mad, I've got to show it. I can't hide it the way you do. Choose between us, eager. Me or your beloved. You shut up. Either he apologizes or I walk right out of here. Suit yourself, sugar. Goodbye. <laughs> I seem to have offended Garnet by using a polysyllabic word. You're drunk. Oh, now, Johnny, that's obvious. Don't, don't be obvious. Adroitness is your racket. Hard, clever, <laughs> and adroit. No, no, not again. Jeff. Johnny, you're a uh, man. Uh, you shouldn't be obvious. Observe, analyze... And recorded for history, because you're unique, absolutely unique. Stop breaking my heart. You know, a lot of people think that I'm just a stooge for you. They don't know that I'm a modern Boswell recording for posterity the doings of a unique individual, the story of Johnny Eager. The next 40 generations will find that required reading, along with Machiavelli. And, uh, hey, Johnny, what... what what, what have you got? Something to sober you up? No, 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 Johnny. Am I going to have no. to hold your nose and pour it down you? It'll make me sick. Go on, drink it. Feel better in a couple of minutes. Uh, but during those couple of minutes, I'll die a thousand deaths. Here. You'd have let me walk right out on you, wouldn't you? That's the way you want it. Oh, Johnny, darling, you win, you win. Win what? Were we betting? You're so cold-blooded. Sometimes I think... I think I don't mean anything at all to you. This town's ready to explode on me any minute. I got four million things to think about, and you want to talk about love at four o'clock in the afternoon. Well, I see you later. Well, I got to look around the town a little. I'll phone you or drop up to your place. All right, darling. I'll wait. Goodbye, John. Goodbye. 
Does that young woman ever do anything besides make exits? You're going to wake up dead one of these days, Jeff. Well, everyone does sooner or later. Johnny, just a little short one? No. Why do you keep lapping up that stuff? I've told you, because every now and then I have to look in a mirror. Johnny? Well, I guess one won't hurt you. Say, uh, Jeff, tell me, what do you hear about Lou Rankin suddenly getting the big head? Yeah, he's got a big head. That's why his brains rattle. You hear anything about Tony Luce running a wheel and two tables at the porthole? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I forgot to check on that. Johnny, come on, give me that drink, please. Leaf's about to fall. Here you are. Now go and lie down. You got to snap out of this by tonight. We're calling on Mr. Luce. Oh? Uh, say, Jeff. Uh, Sir? You know about these things. That that guy, uh, Cyrano de Bergerac or something, does a dame really fall for the type of chatter he dished out? Johnny, are you starting to encounter literate dames? Ah, who said anything about dames? I can quote a few passages of Cyrano if you'd like. And what is a kiss when all is done? A promise given under deal, a vow taken before the shrine Shut of... up. Go on to bed. In a few moments, we'll be back with Act Two of Johnny Igger, starring Robert Taylor, Susan Peters, and Van Heflin. Years ago, as a young actor, I toured the Southwest with a repertoire company. It was often rather rugged going, but we always looked forward to a town where we knew there was a Harvey restaurant. That was insurance of a really good meal, decently served. I still have a sentimental attachment to those eating places, and that's why I especially enjoyed seeing a preview of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's Technicolor musical, The Harvey Girls, starring Judy Garland and John Hodiak. Tonight, we have as our guest a hostess from one of these restaurants of the present day, Mrs. Laverne Stifler of Hollywood. As a hostess, Mrs. Stifler, you certainly will want to see what the original Harvey girls looked like. Well, your picture opened here this week, Mr. Keeley. After waiting in line, I finally managed to squeeze in. I was so interested in what our waitresses were like in frontier days. I guess life was more colorful then, but I'll take the southwest of today. Living is lots more comfortable, for one thing. Imagine it, Mrs. Stifler. Those girls of the 90s didn't have a single cake of Lux toilet soap. Poor thing. I wonder how they managed. <laughs> but seriously, Mr. Kennedy, I'm very grateful for that particular modern luxury. A restaurant hostess, you know, needs to be as careful of her complexion as a screen star. That's why I depend on Lux soap facials to keep my skin just the way I like it. Thanks, Mrs. Stifler, for that practical comment about Lux toilet soap. And looking at you, I'd say that in their presentation of the Harvey girls, MGM didn't exaggerate the loveliness of those waitresses a bit. Busy, attractive women everywhere say Lux Toilet Soap is a beauty care that gets results. They like these quick, easy facials screen stars recommend. Here's all you do. Cover your face generously with the creamy active lather. Work it well in. Rinse with warm water, splash on cold. Then pat dry with a soft towel. Leave skin feeling so fresh and smooth. In recent tests of these Lux Toilet Soap facials by skin specialists, actually three out of four complexions improved in a short time. Why not see how effectively this gentle beauty soap will care for your own precious complexion? Mr. Keeley returns to the microphone. Act two of Johnny Eager, starring Robert Taylor as Johnny, Susan Peters as Lisbeth, and Van Heflin as Jeff. <laughs> It's later that same night, and in a shabby nightclub called The Porthole, Johnny Eager and Jeff pay an unannounced visit on the proprietor. Hello, Johnny. I didn't know that you were... Oh. Michelangelo did some of his best work on his back. Uh, Johnny, there's a lady in the other room. Hey, hey, what's the matter with you, Eager? You're my friend and you slug me. You're not kicking through, Tony. But I did send in. Yesterday, I give Lou Rankin five grand. Rankin, huh? Chase your dame, Tony. Huh? Uh, she's not my dame. Why, Mr. Eager, what would Cyrano say? Uh, okay, Tony, go outside with Jeff. Spill it to him. Uh, I think the bar yeah, might I be don't a good get place. This at all. There's nothing to be frightened of, Miss Bard. I'm not frightened. 
I'd sort of like to know what you're doing here, though. Gentlemen, I was with drinks too much. He wandered off and left a bill for $80, and Mr. Luce has been suggesting I leave some of my jewelry as collateral. Now, tell me what you're doing here. Well, I know it may seem funny, but... You mean you'd feel a lot better if I didn't tell Mr. Verne at the parole board? Isn't that it? He might think you'd uh, been lying or something. Well, there's nothing to be frightened of, Mr. Eager. Why not? Because I... I have no intention of reporting you. I better take you home. All right. Wait a minute, I'll square that beef with Tony. I'm taking the car, Jeff. Uh, that lady in your office, Tony, she's leaving. Uh, sure, Johnny, sure. Hey, Johnny, that blessed damsel will have you over the barrel, amigo, if she talks to the parole board. She won't. Take it easy, Jeff. Yeah. Mr. Freud, you better take a letter. Look, we've been driving around for an hour. I like driving with you, Johnny. Stop all this Bush League nonsense. You don't want me to take you home, and you know it. Of course I don't. I just want to listen to you talk. Of course I don't want you to take me home. Johnny. Yeah? Does it bother you if a girl kisses you while you're driving? What's happened to Liz, Mr. Farrell? I've, I've, I've called every nightclub in town. You're a fool, Mark. You just hand your fiancé over to another man for the entire evening. A drunkard at that. I had to go to that meeting. I was to pick her up later. Why did she go with him at all? I don't know. I thought you knew everything. You're one of the most brilliant men in the country. Oh, cut it out, Mark. I, I guess you love her almost as much as I do. Yes, I think I do. Oh, wait a minute. That's the door. It's Liz, Mr. Farrell. She... Oh. Oh, hello, Mark. Oh, uh... Courtney, Mr. Eager. Oh, yeah. You know, the silliest thing, Mark. Floyd vanished, and Mr. Eager got me out of a lot of trouble, and... And... Oh, hello, Father. Hello, Elizabeth. Your father. Stepfather. Eager and I are acquaintances of long standing. I once had the pleasure of help sending him to the penitentiary. Oh, now, Dad. I served a special prosecutor without fee as a public service to rid the city of Berman. Good night, Liz. Johnny! I think you have some explanations to make to Mark, Elizabeth. I'll be waiting in the library. You don't have to say anything, Liz. He just brought me home, Mark. You wouldn't fool me, would you? I uh, saw you kissing him. You're going to get hurt, you know. No, Mark. I don't know. Good luck, Liz. Why did you stop by last night? A call like you promised. Johnny, tell me the truth. Is this the blow-off? You want to get rid of me? Get rid of you? Garn it all. Now, look, honey, all I want is for you to beat it down to Florida for a while. Then when the town's cooled off, but There's I'll... another girl, Johnny. I could tell it the minute I looked at you. But you always think the worst of everybody. You think if you toss me out, I'll run to the parole board. I wouldn't do that, Johnny. I've got eight million kinds of grief, and now my dame's got to throw a wing-ding on me. Johnny, you still love me? Sure. Well, say it. I love you. I wouldn't add anything to your troubles. I'll wait for you in Florida. a girl. All that nonsense out of your head? I'm okay. Kiss me goodbye. There's a train at noon, sugar. I'll get it. Goodbye, Johnny. And that's that, huh, Johnny? Uh, why do dames always get so messy? Don't blow away the mist of love. Don't dust me from your list, my love. That's poetry, Johnny. I know another quotation... I can smile, and while I smile, cut your heart out with a bloody axe. That's from Shakespeare. I'll use an axe on you one of these days if you don't stop ribbing me. Johnny, why didn't you tell that poor kid the truth? I'm telling you once and for all, stop running me through the strainer. You're always telling me I don't understand something, brother. Well, you're the guy that doesn't understand because you're a sucker, and a sucker never understands a smart guy. You're a guy that has pals. Give a pal your last 50 bucks, wouldn't you? Well, he's already a dead ducker. He wouldn't need the 50, and after he spent it, you're both strictly from hunger. Sure, all the suckers give me sour looks, and when the minute they stop, that's when I'll worry, see? Now I know why you keep me around, Johnny. Well, tell me, I'd sure like to know. You keep me around because even Johnny Eager has to have one friend. Johnny, Johnny, there was just a call for you. Yeah? Oh, you could have knocked me down with a scratch sheet. You wouldn't have guessed who in a million years. Sure I can. John Benson Farrell. <laughs> This 
is why I sent for you, Eager. Don't you go near my daughter again. Don't try to see her and don't phone her. Now get out. <laughs> this is great, Mr. Farrell. I help your daughter out of a spot and you declare war on me. Get out, thief. It'd be much simpler if you just told your daughter not to see me. Oh, you did tell her that. And what did she say? Don't push me too far, Eager. It's a big shot. John Benson Farrell doesn't like his daughter knowing a cab driver. Your visit upstate didn't teach you much, did My it? My parole record's clean. But wouldn't it be odd if you were picked up on suspicion with a gun in your pocket? You'd frame me? I'd resign my job tomorrow to frame you myself. I'd frame you or kill you if it would protect my daughter. Yeah, I guess you would. So long, Farrell. Well, what happened? It's just a little touchy about his daughter, but he hasn't got a leg to stand on, Marco. Johnny, it's not like you to blow your topper over a dame, especially when things are going haywire. The boy's tail drinking. He spent all morning with Halligan. Johnny, there's a big cross of rule on. Right now, I got something more important to think about. Farrell's daughter? That's right. As soon as we get back, find Julio for me. A dame's coming over tonight, and I got a little job for Julio. Why did you bring me here, Johnny? You keep telling me you wanted to see the dog track. Yes, I did. Get a good view here from my window. Imagine, an apartment like this at a dog track. <laughs> it's most impressive, believe me. Yeah, and convenient. Oh, you must love dogs, Johnny, to put all this money into them. Well, I hope to get a lot more out of them. I'll tell you something, sugar. I don't know anything about dogs. I never even owned one. Johnny, not even when you were a boy? <laughs> well, there were a million things I needed a lot worse than a dog. <laughs> that sort of tells the story of Johnny Eaker... So completely. He never had a dog when he was a boy. You missed something, Johnny. That's why you're the way you are. Darling. Yeah? Where do we get off? What's to become of it? Oh, now, don't turn ordinary on me, Liz. I get tired of ordinary dames, and I don't ever want to get tired of you. I didn't mean to turn ordinary. That was just an approach to get you to say you love me. Anytime you start doubting I love you, just add up the score. This town's full of women, and I have to pick the most dangerous one. Dangerous? Yeah, you know, this time it might not be the woman who pays. I might wind up back in a cell. Oh, Johnny, Johnny. I never doubted for one moment that you loved me. Never, darling. But don't talk about that horrible place. You're never going back there. Hey, if you don't mind, Benji, we'd just as soon be alone. It's not Benji, Eager. It's me, Julio. Johnny, he's got a gun. You're blowing your top, Julio. You're playing me for a sucker, Eager. Eh? Julio don't like that. Stand aside, sister. Put down that gun. No, Eager, no. This time you get yours. Johnny! His gun, sugar. They're on the floor. Grab it, Liz. The gun, grab it. Johnny! Liz, the gun. Quick, he's got a knife. He's got... <laughs> Thanks, sugar. Johnny. That crazy heel. At least we got a break. It looks like nobody heard. Come on, you got to get out of here. We can't leave him like this. You want to stand trial for murder? I can't, Johnny. I can't run off. This and... is a fine time to unravel. You're putting yourself right in the grease, and you're putting me right back in the pen. No, no. No, I couldn't do that. I'll go, Johnny. I'll go. I'll put you in a cab. I'll have to get rid of that. Come on, buck up, baby. You'll be okay. All right, you can get up, Julio. They're gone. <laughs> hey, Jeff, I'm a good actor. Huh? I should be on the stage. <laughs> well, that's a moot question on the stage or on the gallows. Hey, look, Eagle will not mind if I borrow a shirt, huh? Mine is all over with ketchup. I smell like a hamburger sandwich. Uh, pick out one with stripes. You might as well get accustomed to them. Hold on, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, Julio's changing his shirt. Did you get her off all right? Yeah, she's shaking like a dice box. Feel kind of funny. I can't imagine why. Neither can I. But what the devil? It's always the innocent bystander that gets hurt. Well, this innocent bystander is in love with you. Well, there just wasn't any other way to play the hand. We got to live. Uh, speaking of hands, Marco phoned. I guess the cross is really on. Halligan has a poker party tonight. He invited Lou Rankin. He didn't invite you. I don't have to go without an invitation. Grab your hat. Hey, what? What are you doing with that bottle of bourbon? Taking it along. For me, Johnny? I'm touched. Uh, this one's for me. Between now and the time we reach Halligan's apartment, I'm getting oiled. At least, Halligan's going to think so. At times, Johnny, you successfully challenged my keenest perceptions. Get Julio. I'll draw you both a diagram on the way over. Rank 
thinking he was carrying a gun, Eager. Here. Okay, Julio, follow in my car. Well, Lou, a little late for the game, aren't you? Hello, Johnny. Waiting for you upstairs, Halligan and the whole city hall crowd. You been up? That's right, me and Jeff. As far as they're concerned, I'm still up there. I don't get it. I'm supposed to be drunk, Lou. I begged out of the game, and right now I'm in Halligan's bedroom, sleeping it off, except that there's a fire escape just outside the window. leads right down here. See? You've gone to all that trouble just to see me? You've been letting a crap game run in the old planter's hotel and holding out the dough. You're nuts. The planter's been closed for weeks. Suppose we go out in the country and take a look. It's closed. I'll apologize. Fair enough? Yeah. I'm sure going to enjoy that apology, Johnny. We're going in your car, Lou. Roll it. Believe me now? <laughs> well, anybody can be wrong, Lou. Figuring me for a cross. Yeah. Here, here's your gun back. Thanks. Well, what are you waiting for? Get in the car. You shouldn't have given me that gun, Johnny. It's nice and quiet here, isn't it? Oh, so I wasn't wrong after all. Why should I take a second cut out of the dough? Well, I found out what I wanted to know. I'm glad you did, Johnny. Now you can die happy. Guess I forgot to give you the cartridges, Lou. You dirty... No, good... <laughs> Julio. I'm here, Eager. Get back to town. I'll take care of Rankin. Come on, come on. This game is all night. I'm not going to play it. Well, here's our sleeping beauty. How do you feel now, Johnny? Oh, Johnny. Like the wrath, Elegant. <laughs> Thanks for the use of your bed. Thanks for the use of Jeff. He's been playing for you. Not too successfully, Johnny, I'm afraid. Well, give me a double stack and get ready to weep, you wolves, clipping Jeff while I'm gone. Find a bunch of pals. I never knew you were a hand for booze, Johnny. You sure tied one on, didn't I? Well, come on, come in, deal the cards. Shuffle them, Harry. I'll be right back. Hello? Yeah, when? Go on, go on. Okay, thanks. Lou Rankin's just been killed. What? Lou Rankin? Automobile accident. Drove his car right off a viaduct. Was drunk, I guess. Empty bottle in his car. Well, just bottle of whiskey? Yesterday. Yeah. Poor Lou. I uh, kind of had an idea you and Lou had fallen out, Johnny. Yeah. It's good I got this alibi, huh? The time it happened, I was playing poker with the city boss and a flock of the city boss's influential friends. I, uh... I had no idea it was getting so late. I, yeah, it is I getting late. I guess you other fellas didn't know it was getting so late either, huh? Say, look, Johnny, You look, I, Halligan. Uh... I'm opening my track on Saturday. Your cut is now 10% instead of 30%. If you'd like to beef about that, huh? I thought not. Come on, Jeff, let's go. But, Johnny, it's Farrell, and he says you told him to come here. That's right, Benji. Send him in. He's in there, Mr. Farrell. Hey, how do you like these posters, Farrell? We're putting them up for the opening Saturday night. Oh, so that's it. This isn't Marco's track, it's yours. Why, you're a bigger thief than ever. You're in no spot to talk down to me, Farrell, so don't. We'll cover that later. What happened to my daughter last night? What did she say happened? I couldn't get a word out of her. She couldn't talk, or wouldn't. Eager, if you've done anything It'll that... will be all right in a couple of days. I'm covering up for her. Covering up? Covering up what? Liz was up here last night. A thug busted in gunning for me. There was quite a battle. While he was trying to carve me up, Liz shot him in the back with his own gun. It isn't possible, is it? Well, she saved my hide. This, this man, what became of the body? Taken care of. Any witnesses? None I can't handle. I sent for you to tell you to sit tight. Tell Elizabeth to do the same. Where's the gun? Oh, well, I've, I've got that safe with her fingerprints on it. Just in case you might try to dream up some way of pinning it on me. I haven't any choice. I'll have to keep quiet. You'll do more than that, Farrell. You'll have the injunction on this track lifted. I'm opening Saturday night. Listen to me, thief. My love for my daughter can make me an accessory after the fact. But I'll cut my throat before I become an accomplice. I'll resign as prosecutor today. No, you won't. You told me you'd turn crooked to save Lisbeth. Well, you've never had a better chance. You mean you talk? Sure I mean it. I'd blast the whole thing. You'd do that to her? To a girl who loved you enough to kill a man? I don't know from that love routine. This is business. Sure, I'm risking five more years in the can, but I'm betting you'll see things my way. And I think I'm betting on the favorite. All right. Go ahead. Open up Saturday night. Goodbye, you guys. Goodbye, Mr. John Benson Farrell. All right. Excuse me. Coming from his face to yours, I'd say you won. Don't you think you better start hoping that that's all bunk about Judgment Day? I feel generous, Jeff. Buy yourself a drink. I guess you didn't hear me. 
It doesn't matter. Jeff, from here on, we're in clover. Yeah, in high hats. Crawling under the belly of our favorite snake. Hmm? <laughs> Go on, Jeff, have a drink. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a moment, we'll bring you the third act of Johnny Yeager, starring Robert Taylor, Susan Peters, and Van Heflin. Another of our guests tonight is the heroine of a success story, a story that might be called uh, She Knew What She Wanted. Brown-eyed, auburn-haired Miss Roberta Jonet never had any doubts about what she wanted to do. At least not from the age of seven, Mr. Keeley, when I began my dancing lessons. From then on, I knew I wanted to be an actress dancer. Did you have dramatic training, too? Yes, along with my high school diploma, came a two-year scholarship at the Neighborhood Playhouse in New York. And after that, I had a chance to do solo dancing, and then came a year's tour of South America, Mexico, and Cuba. And then? Hollywood and a paramount contact. That was two years ago. And since then, I know you've appeared in the picture of Stork Club. Yes, and I have a part in the new picture, Miss Susie Slagles. Well, I understand you've been doing some directing, too, Miss Yonet. Yes, I've helped direct dance numbers in several Paramount productions. It's lots of hard work, but grand fun, too. Now, there's a real success story. And a story we take modest pride in, because... Because I'm a Lux girl, Mr. Kennedy. <laughs> Why wouldn't I be? So many famous stars have found Lux toilet soap works for them. It's the perfect complexion care, I think. But as a dancer, I value it especially, because it's such a delightful bath soap, too. After a dance workout... The girls in my group and I make for the showers in a cake of Lux toilet soap. My, that creamy lather is refreshing. Makes you feel like new again. Thank you, Miss Roberta Jonet. Nine out of ten screen stars, lovely women everywhere, find that Lux toilet soap makes a wonderful beauty bath, too. Here's what they say. When I step from my Lux soap bath, my skin is fresh, really sweet, perfumed with a delightful clinging fragrance. This daily beauty bath makes daintiness sure. Why not get fragrant white Lux toilet soap tomorrow? It's thrifty. Each satin smooth cake can be used to the last thin sliver. Yet Lux Toilet Soap is as luxurious as only the finest ingredients can make it. Here's your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Act three of Johnny Yeager, starring Robert Taylor as Johnny, Susan Peters as Lisbeth, and Van Heflin as Jeff. It's opening night at the Algonquin Park dog track. Thousands of people are betting on the races, and thousands of dollars are rolling into Johnny Eager's pocket. But now in his office, Johnny has a visitor, Lisbeth's friend, Mark Courtney. What's your beef, Courtney? Losing too much dough out there? Where can we talk alone? This is about Lisbeth. Oh, don't go, Jeff. This is an uptown character. He likes an audience. What about Lisbeth? Eager, you haven't seen her in five days. She's in awful shape. I don't think she's eaten in all that time. I don't think she's even slept. Just staying awake with some awful sort of driving hysteria. I don't get it. Neither do I. But whatever it is, it's mixed up with you, isn't it? And I thought perhaps if you had enough money, you'd consider breaking your parole and going somewhere else. How much money? $300,000. <laughs> You're only halfway to the boat, pal. I got a half a million bucks tied up in this track. All right, I think I can borrow the difference. Hey, what racket got you three hundred grand? Hold on to your hat. My grandfather left it to me for not taking a drink till I was 21. Mr. Courtney, if you wish to make up for lost time, I'd be honored to buy you drinks from here to the grave. I'd forgotten about characters like you. How about it, Eager? How do you know after you give me the dough, I won't take Lisbeth with me? But I mean you to take her with you, naturally. Why? Because she's in love with you. <laughs> it never can be said you don't make interesting talk. I'll think it over. Let me know as soon as you can. What's his angle, Jeff? What's his angle? You don't know? No, do you? Yes. Yes, I know, Johnny. But nobody born to woman could explain it to you. Why not? Go on, why not? Because it, it's unselfish. <laughs> that, that broke it. Go on, Johnny. Hey, 
Hey, Jeff. Jeff, wait a minute. I shouldn't have slugged you, but come on back here. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. Where you been? Like Garnet. Johnny, I came back for my purse. Oh, I didn't mean to dust you, but you shouldn't needle me all the time. The needles shall be proportionately dull from now on. Fine thing, walking out on me. Where would you go? You want to know, Johnny? Down to the district attorney's office? I was going to sing, Johnny. About poor old Lou Rankin and those... Two impetuous Maletti brothers. And their souls rest in cement. And then what? Then I was going to blow out my brains. You do that to me? Yeah. Johnny, I, I, I thought about you and I thought about that girl and I said to myself, well, somebody's got to do it. But you know something? You stopped me. <laughs> I stopped you? Yeah. She'd only eat her heart out a little slower with, with you in the death cell. And Sarge, I haven't got the, the nerve to blow out my brain. No, it, it's just like you said. You're the boss, Johnny. You got you got everybody over a barrel. Oh, cut it out, will you? The, the slight seizure is over, I assure you, give Johnny. A guy, give a guy a chance to say something. I'm... Uh... I'm going up to see Elizabeth now. On the level, Johnny. Listen, you, you do feel a little different there, don't you? What are you talking about? She's just a kid who thinks she's carrying a torch. I'll throw her a couple of laughs and snap her out of it. And I'm doing it for you as much as anybody. Thanks, Johnny. Johnny? Oh, Johnny. Darling, darling. Oh, but you shouldn't have come. There might be someone oh, who... Now, don't be scared, sugar. I uh, saw your father downstairs. He said I could come on up. Look, honey, I don't like this. You look bad. It's just that I haven't slept much, I guess. I've been afraid to. I, I thought I might talk about it in my sleep and they'd be listening. And... Johnny, that man, did he have any family? A, a wife, children? Because if he did, I no, just... No, 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 not a soul. Oh, thank goodness for that been on my mind so that... Wait a minute. You've got to be just as tough about this as he would have been. Darling, I am. I will be. Johnny, they couldn't take you back just for being present or a thing like that. Could they? Could they, Johnny? No, of course not, but... Oh, uh... I can wait. A year isn't so much. What are you getting at? They'll never get a word out of me until then. Oh, Johnny, it'll be such a relief to tell. You'll tell who? The police. Just as soon as it won't get you into any trouble. Oh, Johnny, it, it's only the thought of them taking you back that gives me the strength to hold out that long. Don't you see? Liz, now, wait a minute. It's all right, darling. It's all right. Now, you listen for a minute. First off, I'm, I'm telling you that I love you. You hear that? I've known that all the time. Sure, sure, but I've told it to other women, see? Only, only to you, I mean it, and always. Now you can get yourself set to start hating me. I used you, you understand? You never killed anybody. Johnny, I... That guy you think you killed works for me. The gun was full of blanks, and I framed the whole deal so you'd think you were in a jam. <laughs> Liz, I, I used the whole thing as an angle on your old man. That's why my dog track opened tonight. He's afraid I'd start spilling about you, but, but that guy's no more dead than we are. Oh, Johnny, Johnny, my darling. To think of such a lie. Such a wonderful, fantastic lie. Yes, but you've got to believe me. Johnny, you're sweet. But suddenly I... I'm so tired. I want to lie down, please. Sure, sure, but, but remember, Liz, you can walk out of here and forget the whole thing. You never killed anybody. Hold my hand, darling. I just want to go to sleep. Hold my hand until I go to sleep. And come back soon, Johnny. I'm, I'm not afraid of talking now. I'll sleep so quietly, Johnny. I won't talk. I know I won't. Well, Johnny, what? She's got Julio on her mind. Supposed to drive her crazy. Oh, it's not very pretty, is it? Oh, I... 
told her. I told her it was all a frame. You told her? Yeah, you want to laugh? She wouldn't believe me. Can you imagine that? Yes, I can. Well, now what? Well, we dig up Julio and trot him around so she can get a look at him. Well, now listen, suppose she spills that to Farrell. Didn't you hear me? I said the way it is, she's going nuts. All right, I've turned, sucker. What about it? Johnny, Johnny I've been looking all over for you. Halligan called. Starting tomorrow, he says he's got a 50% interest in this track. He says he thinks you'll understand because Julio just went to work for him. Well, there's only one thing to do. What's that, Johnny? Go up to Halligan's place and hire Julio back again. Come on, let's go. Uh, uh, hello, Eager. Ain't, ain't, ain't you coming in? Thanks, Julio. Is Halligan around? Uh, no, no, he, he, he's out. Been drinking, Julio? <laughs> Just a little, yeah. You got drunk and you talked to Halligan. You talked enough, so he hired you. Oh, Eager, you, you ain't worried about me? Worried? Say, what kind of a guy do you think I am? Uh, when do you think Halligan will be back? Well, a half hour, maybe. Good. We just got time to do an errand. A job? Yeah, I got to stop a guy from talking. Yeah, but uh, Halligan told me Your no. last job for me, Julio, and there's five yards in it. Five, five. I should do it free for old time's sake, but uh, I, I could use 500. Oh, hello, Halligan. Hello, Johnny. You going somewhere, Julio? To, to see a man with the eager. You crazy? Don't you know you won't live five minutes if you get in a dark alley with him? You're out of line, Halligan. You got enough sense to know if he kills you, he's in the clear. You're drunk, Julio, and he's conning you into taking the same kind of a ride he gave Lou Rankin. I don't like that kind of talk, Halligan. I... I guess I blew my top, Johnny. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been cutting up touches with you for ten years, and all of a sudden you pull this on me. Johnny, listen to me. This is awful. Let's not go battling between ourselves just when the money's starting to roll in. Want to talk sense? Make a new deal on the dog track? Like 50%? Uh, I guess that is a little steep. The original deal was 30. It still holds. I ain't talking. Do you mind if we iron out the details in the morning? I've still got that little job to do. Guess I'll have to handle it without our friend Julio. And maybe better that way. I'll meet you in the morning. And, Johnny, we're, we're all friends again. This, this beef's all forgotten. All forgotten, Bill. See you tomorrow. Be here tomorrow morning, Julio. Eager? What do you think? Yeah, it's got to be done. That tin horn big shot, it's got to be done. I'd say that you didn't get what you wanted. Not yet. Halligan wouldn't turn Julio loose. What are you looking for? There's a gun in this glove compartment. I may be needing it. Oh, it's going to be like that. Huh? As long as I'm a sucker, I might as well go the whole way. Uh, where are we going? Going to the corner. I want to make a phone call. You sit tight and keep your eye glued on this building. Watch for Julio. Hello. Hello, is, uh, is this Mr. Courtney? This is Mr. Courtney. Well, listen, this is Johnny Eager. Yes, Eager. I got no time for explanations. Get hold of Elizabeth right now. Get her out of the house if you have to drag her and come down here and meet me. I'll be at Fifth and Waverly. And hurry. No sign of Julio, Johnny. Okay. Take the car, Jeff. We're separating. Look, is there anything you want me to do? No, just get going. Yes, yeah, sure. So long, Johnny. Uh, uh, Johnny, uh, yeah. listen, uh, uh, Johnny, you know, when, when you batted me tonight... That's water under the bridge. Oh, well, yeah, uh, sure, but I, uh, I, I had that coming. I, I just wondered why you didn't do that a long time ago, Johnny. Listen, uh, uh, Johnny, ha have you ever been out to the Rockies? Are you nuts? No, I've never been to the Rockies. Well, listen, they've got big mountains out there just like Christmas trees with lakes so clear and... As deep as you ever saw in your mother's eyes, Johnny. And uh, Johnny, listen, let, let, let's go out there and, and climb a couple of mountains. Will you get going? Yeah. Yeah, so long, Johnny. It's about time, Courtney. Turn off your lights. They're off. Johnny, what is all this? Mark said you called Listen me. Listen to me. Any minute now, one guy or two guys are going to come walking out of that apartment house up there. And one of them will be the guy you think you knocked off. And I'm going to bring him over here and show him to you. Full of life, just like I said. Darling, I told you before hey, that uh, I... Hey, what do you think your boyfriend here did? Had himself a big moment. Thought I was short on dough, so he offered me all his cash if I'd get out of town and take you with now, him. Now, wait a minute, Eager. Oh, so I guess when you and I split up, you could be halfway happy with a guy like that, huh? Split up, Johnny? Yeah, you know people like you and me. We break as quick as we hit. Johnny, don't choke anymore. 
You said it tonight. You said I was the only one. Oh, sure, that. Well, you were in a wingding. You got to say a few phony words if it's going to help a pal out of a wingding. You don't mean that, Johnny. You don't. Cut it. Here he comes. Is that your man? Yeah, stay in the car, both of you. I'll duck around and back. Take it easy, Julio. Keep your hands out of your pockets. Okay, now walk up to this car. Well, here he is, kid. Take a good look. Alive and kicking. Ugly rat, isn't he? Too bad you didn't bump him off. Well, you see him, don't you? Yes. Yes, but Johnny, what you said a moment ago, you didn't you, you, mean it. You can get some sleep now, huh? You don't have to be quiet any longer, see? Johnny, look at me. You didn't mean what you said, did you? Sure, sure I did. That big pitch tonight was just a gag, just like Julio here was a gag. Now step on that gas and get going. No, Johnny. Listen, kid, get some sense, will you? If it's going... that man, he's getting away. Johnny, don't shoot, no. Liz, why did you grab my hand? Why, it's got to be done. No, Johnny, no, they'll put you back. Going after Halligan. This whole street will cut loose any minute. You got to get out of here. He's right, Liz. I won't go. Not until I know. You got to beat it, Liz. No, Johnny. I'm staying with you because I know you're lying to me. This time I know it because you can't look at me and then... Eager. So what if I am lying? I had to do it, Courtney. I had to slug her. And what I just said about lying to her, don't you ever tell her that, you understand? Come with us, Eager. I got something I got to finish. Take her away. Up in the mountains or something where there's lakes and stuff. Just you two together and talk it out. Only talk her out of my life. Talk her out of my life. So long, Eager. There he is. The sucker's walking right toward us. Yeah. All right, Julio. Let him have it. <laughs> Johnny. Johnny. Oh, Jeff. Hello, Johnny. Jeff. What's the highest mountain where we're going? Well, it, it's... It, Johnny? Johnny. Stand aside, buddy. Who shot him? I don't know. I think it came by that building, Mac. All right, what'd he say? You were just talking to him, buddy. Hey, he's dead. Yes. Yes, he's dead. Well, he, he, he just asked about a mountain. What mountain? Did you know this guy? Know him? It says in the Bible, there be three things which are too wonderful for me. Yea, four which I know not. What are you talking about? The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. As the curtain falls on Johnny Eager, I'm sure you'll agree it's been a pleasure and a privilege to welcome back to this theater three such stars as Robert Taylor, Susan Peters, and Van Heflin. This has been quite a reunion for me. The last picture I made before I joined the Navy was with Susan Peters. That's something I'll never forget. Playing opposite Robert Taylor was a great pleasure. And now that Bob's back, I imagine plenty of other feminine stars are looking forward to the same chance. Weren't you and Colonel Keeley together in the Air Force's van? Well, uh, as close as a lieutenant and a colonel ever get. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this is the first time I've seen Van since he left on his overseas assignment. You did a great job, Van. Well, if you don't mind my saying so, Colonel, I think you did a splendid job on your army picture target for today. I, I just wish the public could have seen that. I imagine war experience will be a great help in making pictures for the public. Well, a monumental example of that is metro Golden mayors current picture, They Were Expendable. There you have Bob Montgomery back from active duty as the star and Captain John Ford also from the Navy as director. Yes, and as a Navy man, I can say the result is mighty authentic and mighty convincing. Susan, I understand you're taking up a new career in the literary field. Well, so far I've just been writing articles about my friends, the screen stars here in Hollywood, their personal life and habits. And I am sure you find that one of their habits is uh, Lux toilet soap. <laughs> you're right, Mr. Keeley. And I can promise you that I use Lux soap regularly. 
It's a wonderful complexion care. And from a star with your complexion, that's a pretty solid tribute, Susan. Incidentally, we have another lovely star from your home studio appearing here next week. What's the play, Bill? It's one of the season's most appealing love stories. Metro Golden Mayor's recent screen success, The Clock, with two of Hollywood's best love stars, Judy Garland and John Hodiak. Bring a lonely boy and girl together in a big city, give them 48 hours to fall in love with one another, and then see what happens in this tender and romantic drama. Judy and John are great together in the Harvey Girls, too, Bill, and I'm sure they'll be great together in the clock. Good night. Good night, Good night. and Good night. come back again soon. <laughs> Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Judy Garland and John Hodiak in the clock. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. As your grocer said this to you lately, sorry, madam, no more Lux toilet soap till next week. Yes, your favorite Lux toilet soap is hard to get right now. That's a direct result of the great national shortage of industrial fats and oils. And here's where you and every other American housewife can help prevent a further scarcity in the supply of soap. Continue to save every drop of your used kitchen pants. Take them to your butcher and receive four cents for every pound you turn in. Our Secretary of Agriculture says it may be many months before we can obtain adequate supplies of imported fats and oils. That's why your government urges American women to continue the magnificent job of fat salvage they did throughout the war. Keep on saving. Save every drop of used kitchen pats and take them to your butcher. You can help prevent a further shortage of soap. Our thanks for the play of this evening go to Metro Golden Mayor, who will soon release the Clark Gable Greer Garson picture, Adventure. Get your dimes and dollars ready now for the 1946 March of Dimes. Join America's crusade to protect American children from infantile paralysis. The motion picture industry, through over 14,000 theaters, will help collect your contribution between now and January 31st, or send your dimes direct to your local March of Dimes headquarters. This is your one opportunity to join the fight on infantile paralysis. Give generously. Give soon. Join the March of Dimes this week. This program is broadcast to our men and women overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, Reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear The Clock with Judy Garland and John Hodiak. The Spry Treat of the Week. Spry apple pancakes, tender, delicate pancakes grizzled with maple syrup. Try them for breakfast and for light golden deliciousness, make them with Spry. It's pure, bland, all-vegetable shortening at its creamy best. For all you bake and fry, rely on Spry. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of The Clock with Judy Garland and John Hodiak. And why not tune in a half hour early to hear Joan Davis over most of these stations? This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>